Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another video. I hope you're staying safe in self-isolation or lockdown wherever you are in this world. Today's video, I'm gonna take you through how I take my photos for Instagram. So this is gonna be like a creative photography challenge. I'm gonna go around the boundaries of my girlfriend's house and try and find a unique spot to take some creative Instagram photos. I'm thinking, in this greenhouse is gonna be a good place, hence why I'm wearing this shirt. And by the way, the sun is shining today, it's like 17 degrees, the warmest day so far. Obviously, if you wanna do one of these challenges too, I'll make a hashtag at the end of the video, and I want you to tag me in your pictures. All you need is a camera or your mobile phone and some creative thinking around the home, and I wanna see your photos too. So, I think first things first, we need to clear out this greenhouse. heavy ass wooden table. This could be a cool prop. Okay, for the first photo, I'm gonna stand where Francis is and kind of just pose with the ax in amongst the logs because I'm trying to be a sexy lumberjack boy. Um, <laughs> This is how I take all of my photos, by the way. I either use Francis or I use Mike. Um, so what I do is I stand here and I work out the composition, what looks best. I then change all the settings, shutter speed, aperture and everything, make sure the camera's set perfect. And then me and Francis will swap positions. So I'll become the subject and Francis will become the photographer. I then set the camera to burst mode, which means it's gonna take like 10 shots a second, 16 shots a second. And that way we're guaranteed to get a really nice shot. Um, obviously, in between all of that, I'll be checking the camera to make sure that the photos are turned out nice, to make sure my face is looking good, and well, to make sure my posing is looking good, my body composition is looking good, and all the rest of it. So, we're just gonna shoot this because it's absolutely boiling in here, and I'll talk you through it at the end. I think we got some cool shots there. Um, fingers crossed we did. If we didn't, it doesn't really matter. This is all fun and games. It's about experimenting, it's about trying to get creative. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So hopefully we've got one nice shot there. That took around an hour. But to be honest, there's nothing else to do in quarantine, self-isolation, lockdown. I love taking photos. I love getting creative and trying to make things work. If they don't work, it really doesn't matter at all. We had fun doing it and it only took an hour. So let's go inside. Let's have a look through the photos. I'll show you the procedure I do to pick the best photos and then we'll put them into Lightroom and do some editing. So see you inside with a nice warm cup of coffee. Okay guys, so I've been sat here for like two hours now. I've filmed this four or five times. And every time I filmed the voiceover, it's been like 20 minutes long, which is just way too long in my opinion. And you guys are just gonna lose focus and probably end up getting bored. Although the information that I'm given is very, very useful. And I have many tips and tricks to share with you guys about Adobe Lightroom, but I'm just gonna save that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through how I edit just one of the photos. I'm gonna take you through my import process and that she'll do for today's video. Again, leave a comment down below what you wanna see in future videos. And it's easy enough for me to film these videos. It's a screen recording and me talking crap to the camera. So just let me know down below in the comments what you wanna see. So first of all, the import process, what I do is I get all of my footage onto my desktop and then sort it into folders. So I have the 1DX photos and I have the Canon 80D photos in two separate folders. Then what I do is I open an app called Adobe Bridge. This has been a lifesaver for me, probably one of the best apps I've ever found. And this allows me to look through raw photos super fast, super quick, super efficient. I can blow them up, I can zoom in, I can check focus. I then rate the photos on a one to five star basis. Once I have all the photos rated as five star, I then select all those photos, drag them into a new folder called 1DX best or Canon 80D best. And that means I've separated all the good photos from the bad photos. Once I've done that, I plug my hard drive in, I open up my Lightroom catalog. The reason I store all of my Lightroom catalogs on hydro, Lightroom catalogs on hard drives is because I go through so many photos, it just fills my laptop up 
almost instantly. So I do have to have them on hard drives. Again, this is something I will explain in another video. I open up Lightroom, I then import all the photos into the Lightroom catalog, which is stored on my hard drive. I create a subfolder for those photos. In this case, greenhouse photos, that's what I'm naming the folder. And then I begin the editing process. So we had like 26 photos at first, narrowed down to from our favorites. We actually started with five or 600 photos, which is crazy. And we narrowed that down to like 26, 28. Then what I did in Lightroom is I went through all those photos again, and I narrowed it down to eight of my favorite photos. Okay, so now we are in Adobe Lightroom and as you can see along the bottom, I have my eight favorite photos selected in red. What we're gonna do first of all is crop the photo. And um, again, I always do this at the beginning so I know exactly what I'm working with when I am manipulating the photo. Next, we're gonna change the exposure. So we're just gonna bump the exposure up the tiniest amount just so we can see all of the detail in the photo. And again, it was a little bit underexposed. Then what I like to do is adjust the contrast. Um, I've bumped that up to 21. I do really like contrasting photos that's just my style i like to see the subject and the colors pop after that we're going to reduce the highlights we were shooting on quite a bright day we're going to just knock the highlights down a little bit more so we can have more detail there shadows don't need to be changed too much we do have a nice exposure on the subject so we're just going to bump them up by 14 and then the whites and the blacks it's up to you how you play around with those i just kind of mess around them mess around with them until i get kind of uh, a look that i like so there's no real rules in lightroom it's just what you like to do and what you think looks good so what i'm going to do is reduce the clarity by 10 and um, that's just going to kind of soften the photo a bit and um, if we have the clarity bumped all the way up we're going to see a lot of imperfections in the skin which isn't really nice when you're editing a portrait photo. You don't really want to see those imperfections, so what's the point in highlighting them with clarity? Uh, then we move on to dehaze, which is kind of like another form of contrast. I just bumped that up by five. I love dehaze. I love contrast. That's just my style. Then what I'm going to do is quickly check the white balance. So I'm going to see if the photo needs to be cooled down or warmed up slightly. Normally I leave it as a shot. It's always pretty good in camera just to let the camera decide on the white balance. I like how it is, so I'm just going to leave it. And then what we're gonna do is knock down the vibrance. And um, the reason I knock down the vibrance is because I like kind of a desaturated look and then I like to pull out the colors, which I think look best in the HSL slider, which we're gonna move on to in a minute. Then we're moving on to the tone curve. Tone curve is a bit of a tricky one. You just have to play with it normally rule of thumb is to have kind of an S curve. Um, so again, just play around with an S shape and see what you like. Play around with the lows, the mid tones, the highs, and just see what type of look you like. Again, there are no real rules when it comes to foot editing. You just do what you think looks nice in your opinion. And again, I've played with this for years and I still haven't got it perfect. So this is just the way I like my tone curve. Next, we have our hue saturation luminance slider. This way, hue allows you to play with the colors, change the, the hue of the color. Again, we don't wanna change the hue of the red because the red of the shirt is kind of one of the main points of focus of the photo and we don't want to manipulate that in any way which is gonna be off-putting or distracting. So we're gonna leave that red how it is. What we're gonna do next is take some of the yellow. Um, the greens are actually really built up from yellow in pretty much any photo. So if you take down the saturation of the yellow, you're gonna get a nice muted green. That's just kind of a style that I've been enjoying at the minute. So as you can see, I have desaturated the yellow and the green, and that's gonna really kind of just desaturate the background, the bushes, the grass, the hedges and stuff. And then we allow, that allows us to have more focus on the subject. Um, luminance is the kind of like the brightness of the color. So what we're gonna do, I always reduce the luminance of the orange. That's gonna make me look a little bit more tanned. Again, I like looking tanned. I don't wanna look washed out. And again, we're gonna darken the greens and yellows to really kind of draw the attention away from the greens and yellows. As you can see, the ax is yellow. And I think this is something that I'm actually not happy about. Probably in Photoshop after this, I would go into Photoshop and use the color selection tool and maybe change the color of the axe because the yellow is distracting and it is taken away from the main subject. But that's an easy fix to do in Photoshop. You can't really do that in Lightroom. But again, by desaturating the yellows, you can see we've took the focus away from the axe, which I think is important. Again, there is no real blues in this photo other than in the bracelets, which again, doesn't really matter. Um, if there had been a bright blue sky, you have to just be careful what you do with those blues. But because we were shooting on an overcast day, um, the blues don't really matter too much. And already I'm really liking how this photo looks. 
what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of grain. I always add a little bit of grain to my photos, just the tiniest amount. And again, that's gonna kind of hide any imperfections in the skin. It's gonna, if you have like big pores or stuff like that, it's gonna hide it behind that grain, which I think is quite flattering. Next, we're using the highlights and shadows. Um, so all we're doing here is adding colors to the highlights and shadows. Again, this is something that I don't really play around with that much, but just play with the sliders, see what looks good, see what doesn't. Normally, if you have some nice warm highlights and then have some nice cool shadows, you can build more of a contrast in the image. So what I've done is I've added some yellow orange highlights and some kind of teal blue shadows just the smallest amount as you can see highlights are seven shadows are four which is really really small and kind of like almost unnoticeable so you can see before and after there's hardly any difference there at all which is how i like it again we're going to mess around with the orange to make sure the skin tone is looking good skin tone probably when you're taking photos of portraits and editing them <coughs> and editing them uh, the skin tone is the most important thing you need to have it looking natural that's all that matters really Again, we're going back up to hue. We're gonna try and mute those greens even more and kind of just get a different feel for a photo. So it's gonna stand out on the Instagram feed. It's gonna look different to everyone else's photos. Um, so again, that is pretty much a super fast edit. All the things that I would change. Again, as you can see, I'm literally just sliding the sliders back and forth to see what looks good and what doesn't. That's the way I learned to use Lightroom. And then after that, we're gonna move on to something a little more advanced, radial filters and brush filters. Radial filter, I use this on nearly every single photo. All I do is select me, draw kind of like a circle around me and I invert the circle so that, that means whatever we change on that circle is gonna be within the center of the circle rather than outside the circle. So that's why I click invert. And all we're gonna do is add a little bit of exposure, 0 0.15 or 0 0.25, and that's just gonna kind of brighten up me as the subject a little bit more, and it's gonna make me stand out from the background. We're gonna go in and use the clone heel tool and just kind of tidy up that spot, big bite or ingrown hair, whatever it is on my neck, it's kind of distracting, not really the most aesthetically pleasing. So it's a really easy fix. Again, I would normally do this in Photoshop, but you can do it in Lightroom if you want. My voice is going because I'm talking so much for eight minutes already. And now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of enhancing the eyes with a little brush and um, just increasing the exposure by 0 0.15 to 0 0.25. You don't want to do it too much because it will look over edited and unnatural. But again, it's nice to make the eyes pop. I'm doing the exact same thing here on the hair. I'm just adding a little bit of exposure, which gives us a kind of more texture in the hair, which I think looks really nice. This is a new thing that I've started doing and I do think it makes a big difference. And my hair looks pretty sick there, considering I cut it myself the other week. Um, you can do the same thing for the beard. So as you can see, my beard is actually a lot heavier down below rather than on the sides. So what I'm doing is drawing over the beard and I'm gonna decrease the exposure on that brush, meaning it's gonna darken it slightly, giving a more like even look on the beard. Again, it's unnecessary, but these are just little things that I like to do and it doesn't really take too long at all. <coughs> what is wrong with my voice? Let's have a look at the before and after. Are we happy with it? Yes, I'm pretty happy with it. That looks really, really good, to be honest. Okay, so now that we're happy with the photo, um, and all because all these photos were shot in the sim in a similar location under the same conditions, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a preset. This is really, really easy to do. Go over to presets, click create preset, and then we're gonna take the boxes that we need and that we want and deselect the other boxes that we don't want. Of course, we're gonna call it greenhouse vibes. <coughs> greenhouse vibes, what else do you expect? I'm just unchecking anything that I don't want to be checked here. And then we're gonna click create. Then all I do is literally go through the rest of the photos and paste that preset onto them. And that is gonna be the starting point for all of the edits on each of them photos. I can then sort through all them photos way faster than before. And all the photos are gonna have the same look. They're gonna be uniform in the way that the colors appear on Instagram. And again, this is just something that I really like doing. But you can see that we're just applying the greenhouse vibes to every picture and it's actually coming out pretty good. Again, it's a really good starting point for all of the pictures. So what I'm gonna do now is end this video here. I'm gonna show you the before and after for all of the pictures. I'm gonna allow this speed edit to continue just really fast. I'm gonna show you through how to speed up through all of my favorite photos out of these eight and show you what I did, show you the befores and afters. And I think that is everything for today's video. 
we did narrow it down to 12 minutes but again this video is going to be like 15 minutes long so i do apologize for that there is so so much i could talk about in adobe lightroom and if you guys enjoy this video please please let me know leave a thumbs up and we can do plenty more of these videos this is kind of what i think i'm best at and what i actually really enjoy doing so i hope you like the before and after of the photos um make sure you go follow me on instagram so you can see all these photos firsthand and maybe we'll do one of these again very soon also if you want to buy any of the presets the preset link is down below um 50 off during lockdown so go and grab yourself some presets and i'd just like to say thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one